My name is Wendy Yeager Hyman. I'm the executive director of the Woodhull Institute for Ethical Leadership. Woodhull is an organization that's dedicated to ensuring that all women can obtain the practical skills that they need to succeed regardless of the path that they choose in life. This 16-week program is made possible through the generous support of Dove's campaign for real beauty. Dove has made a sincere commitment to the total woman and her self-esteem. The Woodhull experience will allow you to begin to investigate your authentic voice. You will learn the skills that are necessary to go out and advocate for the things that are truly important to you. You'll learn how to speak in public, whether it's in a classroom or a boardroom. You will learn the strategies that you need to secure your financial future and the tactics to negotiate for what you truly deserve. Enjoy the journey. Devin Woodhull, welcome you to this session on financial literacy, hosted by the CEO of Sterling Investment Management and the author of Financial Intimacy, Jacquette Timmons. I open every workshop with an exercise called the Nine Dot Puzzle. What I need for you to do is to draw nine dots but you're going to draw three rows of three dots. And when you have those drawn, I need you to connect the dots using four straight lines and your pen can never leave the paper. Who finished first? Jennifer, what do you have? I've got an arrow. You have an arrow. Does everybody else have an arrow? It should actually look like this. Let me draw it for you. Your first line starts outside of the three rows of dots from an angle. This line crosses diagonally through three dots to an opposite corner where your second line continues horizontally across your first row of three dots, passing the last dot. Then your third line continues diagonally down through the third dot in the second row and the second dot in the third row once more passing through to a line with the third dot in your first column to continue your fourth line all the way up connecting your first line without having ever left the page. So you've basically drawn the end of an arrow. Some of you didn't get that and that's perfectly fine and that's exactly what I wanted. And I'm looking at your smiles and I'm reading that as a collective, ah, now that you've drawn this for me, I get it. And the reason that I did that is because you had to go outside of the box in order to draw that arrow. And that's a great way when it comes to talking about money. We sometimes have to go outside of the box. You use your money every day, be it in the form of cash, your debit card, credit card, or online banking. But just because you use your money every day doesn't mean that you know what you have, what you tend to do with what you have, or why. So with that, I'd like to officially welcome you to our financial segment, Stop Treating Your Money So Poorly. I've worked in the industry for 20 years. I started my career at a major bank, working in the private bank, managing money for high net worth individuals. And I started my practice 12 years ago. Sterling is an investment education and financial coaching firm. So a lot of the work that I do is with nonprofit organizations that work with people in transition, welfare to work, incarceration to work. And one of the things that I've noticed, regardless of where someone falls on the continuum, whether they're uber wealthy, whether they're in transition, or whether they're somewhere in between, what you do with a dollar is exactly what you will do when you have $10, $100, $1,000, or $100,000. Currently, my practice is focused on the needs of two groups of people in particular. The first group are college-educated professionals who have spent more time focusing on and managing their career than their money. 
Does that describe anybody? Yeah, I figured it would. And I probably would go on to say that you would describe yourself as someone who's good at earning money, maybe even good at saving it, but probably need to get better at investing and planning. The second group of people are people that suffer from inertia. They know they need to save, but they don't. They know they need to invest in their retirement plan, be it a 401k or a 403b, but they don't. They know that they need to own property, but they don't. And oftentimes it's not because they don't have the resources, but because they feel overwhelmed and bombarded by the plethora of information that is out there, that they don't know what to do with the information and they don't know whether or not the actions that they are taking are the right actions. I am here today to help you and to help others really address all of the facets that comprise your financial life so that you are good at earning it, you're great at saving it, and you're fabulous at investing and planning. I am also here to help you create a system for filtering out all of the noise so that you only hone in on that information that's relevant to you, that's pertinent to you, and will be most helpful to your particular circumstances. At the end of the day, I'm here to help you be successful with your money, however you define success. We're going to do that by focusing on what I call the pyramid of wise money management. And that pyramid is nothing more than a triangle. But we're going to divide that triangle into three sections. The bottom of that pyramid is awareness. This is where we're going to tap into your thoughts about money, your beliefs about money, and your behavior with money. From awareness, we move to reasoning. How do you think things through in general? And then how do you arrive at the financial choices that you make? And when you combine awareness with reasoning, that leads to purposeful action. And we're going to get you to take purposeful action by focusing on questions questions that will help you to identify what it is that you need to do differently. Because even though you are all hearing one voice, which is mine, you are all coming here having had different experiences. And so you're going to focus on the tip and the technique that I share with you that most resonates with you. We're also going to focus on questions because I'm going to use that as a way of facilitating an objective of mine which is to help get you to have a paradigm shift. I want you too to think of money as a personal development tool. And when you do so, it will teach you some very interesting life lessons. One of those lessons will come packaged in the form of strategy. When we're done, you will know if you have a strategy and if you have one, whether or not it needs to be refined. You will also know what it is you need to get better at saying yes or no to with yourself. And then also when it comes to managing boundaries externally, who do you say yes or no to and what activities do you say yes or no to? Another thing that money will teach you is how creative are you? Do you think outside of the box? And then finally, it will really give you some insight into your discernment. How do you go about making the choices that you make? So our next segment will be the first tips on treating your money well.